This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So, rereading through the New Testament, going to be covering all the books of the Bible. Alright, see how far it gets through the Bible here. It's quite a bit before we reach the New Testament. And we'll be covering uh, one book at a time. Not sure how we'll get a uh, picture here. Matthew. One book at a time. Today is Matthew. I read through Matthew today, the day I'm shooting this video, all at once. And so my experience through, uh, and I just read Matthew 1, chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, right in the beginning. And in my experience, I, this is a Bible I've had uh, since I was a kid. Um, not even sure where I got it. I've had it since... I was a teenager, maybe even a preteen. Um, it's a new international version, just something I happen to hold on to. Um, and now, with a collection of books, a uh, you know, a fascination with reading, reading to investigate reality, reading for personal development, reading out of respects for, um, especially some of the most important books in history, um, just for beginner's understanding sake i'll be reading the new international version here and i've got other types other versions i've got this book here off of amazon the holy bible 1611 edition king james version so i've read through um, different parts of this and i've been able to recognize without too much effort um, i've been able to recognize kind of how to read the old english here um, so maybe doing some referrals to that and some uh, book reviews out of some of the English through there. And so I've never read all the way through the Bible in my life. Um, just about a year ago, within the past one or two years, it, time's going by so fast, I had ordered this book as well off of Amazon. It's a hardcover. It's a nice hardcover. Um, like a linen covering here. The Torah, this is in English, and I read through this book here, front to back, um, let's just say about a year ago, uh, definitely not longer than two years, I believe it was about last summer though, can't quite remember. Um, so this was my first time reading all the way through these books. Before that, I had maybe read through Genesis once or twice, just trying to restart the Bible, um, and I've never read all the way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I've never met, read through uh, any books completely until I did that. And then with uh, the Torah. And then I picked up this book and I started reading 
after that I started reading what does it start with Joshua looks like I read Joshua Samuel or Joshua judges Samuel for our first and second Samuel and got into first Kings and made it to second Kings chapter one or two um, and that was about the same time I did this so I kind of vaguely remember uh, that and but so I'm going to just be going ahead and kind of starting over and so with these book reviews I'm going to cover the New Testament I this is my plan so far unless I change it the New Testament at the same time as the Old Testament so I'll be going back and forth I'm doing Matthew today and then I'll go back and I'll read uh, Genesis again and do a review on Genesis um, I've even got this here as a uh, translated from the original by H. Polano, uh, the Talmud. So we're gonna we're gonna get into all this stuff. Um, I I don't bring myself to belong to any religion. I was raised around Christianity. Um, I've got I've got a copy. This copy I also got on Amazon. It's a pretty nice copy of the Holy Quran. So I'll be reading through this as well. We'll go through all of it. We've even got some of these extras here. Uh, the Books of Enoch, another another Amazon uh, book, pretty big book here. Um, first Book of Enoch, Second Book of Enoch, Third Book of Enoch, The Book of Fallen Angels, The Watchers, and the Origins of Evil. Uh, I've got the complete works of Flavius Josephus we'll be checking out as well. So it's a lot of reading, but really there's plenty of time to read. Be surprised how much you can get done. Just by um, dedicating maybe 50 to 100 pages a day. We got we're just all kinds of other stuff. I'm not going to grab the other ones. Norse mythology, all kinds of things. Books on Mithras. And we'll be going through the Upanishads, Dhammapada, Bhagavad Gita. Um, from the Eknath Iswaran. Um, you know, classics of Indian, Indian spirituality here. We're going to go try and go through everything. Make many passes through, uh, especially where we find the most interest. So I read Matthew today, and it doesn't take long. Um, it's really not not much to read through at all. So it's just can easily see how quickly um, can read through uh, the entire Bible. So we'll make it through many times. There's so many different layers of things to analyze and read, and maybe research. Um, and so I don't even I don't I don't even know uh, being completely honest right now who wrote each of these books and when so we find out history and background on that as well but we're just going to go through make our first pass uh, Matthew starts off with the genealogy of Jesus and it's interesting I, I I remember I just read like somewhere on the first page you get through 14 generations from Abraham to David and then another 14 generations from David to the um, exile to Babylon and after the exile starts with Jeconiah and then um, well from and then it, so it's 14 Abraham to David 14 from David to um, exile to Babylon and then 14 generations down to Joseph or Joseph or to to Christ okay and so when I read the birth of Jesus Christ it's described Joseph which would be Jesus's well Mary's husband so um, if Jesus came from the Holy Spirit and and from Mary's body you know what I thought when I was reading that um, and this is all just really beginner um, thoughts here on the reading and so I look forward to right here in front of you guys on my channel as I read through these books you can maybe see a growth in my own understanding and beliefs um, completely open mind reading through this I want to read to understand so I, I find it important to read everything and then reread reread but I thought, you know, I was thinking about how the Jews, you know, uh, I'm not sure how accurate it is, but I've heard something about a Jew only being considered a Jew by the birth of, by their, if their mother is a Jew, not their father. So their father can be a Jew, but they won't be considered a Jew unless their mother is. But I, I don't know how accurate that is. Maybe somebody can leave some thoughts in the comments. Um, and I also just thought it was interesting that, so Jesus comes from Mary and not directly from Joseph. And David, 
So, okay, this is something I was thinking. The visit of the Magi. Uh, and, I, you know, as soon as I see the Magi, I think of Robert Sepper's channel. It's a very important channel to me. I bring it up a lot. Here's some of his books. Uh, Species with Amnesia, I think, is his most um, recommended book by, by himself to start with. It's not his first book. His first book was 1666, Redemption Through Sin, regarding um, Sabbatai Sevi. Uh, claiming to be the Messiah, to Robert Sepper there. Check out his YouTube channel, amazing. I uh, made a recent video of, um, about the Magi, history of the Magi. So these things are just kind of what's running through my mind as I'm reading this. I'm a close follower of Robert Sepper. I've watched all of his videos. Very interesting to find out what's going on. And as I've seen, I listen to rabbis on, on YouTube as well. I listen to a few. I listen to Tovia Singer. I used to listen to um, Yom Tov Glaser for a while. It's not that I really broke away from anybody for any particular reason. I was just kind of, you know, surfing around, listening. And, you know, I just thought it's time to go ahead and, and, and spend my time reading through the Bible. And it, to me, I mean, this book, it's just so brief. I mean, there just must be these other accounts in here that fill in different blanks. Um, move this, this book, Matthew, there is 28... 28 chapters, um, we go from the birth of Jesus Christ and the genealogy um, all the way through um, the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the resurrection, the guards report, and the great commission. Um, so it was, a, it was a quick journey, I mean just a very thin part of the book, and of course going through the Bible we've got pretty full pages here, this isn't just large print stuff, so it it takes a few minutes to read through it, but it really didn't take long today. Um, so, and when Jesus was born, King Herod had heard about this, and I think was uh, had said it was going to send to, to kill um, this newborn Jesus Christ. And so Joseph, there was a, they talk about the escape to Egypt, um, Chapter 2, verse 13. Escape to Egypt. Let's see. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and, escaped, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So they go to Egypt. And then they return after Herod dies. In verse 19, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. Verse 23, And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, He will be called a Nazarene. Hey, but I've heard things about Nazareth not existing during this actual time in history. And I, I don't mean to attack anything I read in here. I'm just talking about what I've heard and the things that are going through my mind after what I've already consumed in so many different places. Um, but I mean, these are just thoughts flowing through. They're not exactly an argument, argument to rebuke everything that I read. But that's what's going through my mind as I'm reading this. And so then we have John the Baptist prepares the way in chapter 3. Read a little bit of this. Interesting. Um, John the Baptist. So John the Baptist's feast day, or apparently his birthday, is June 24th. And that is the same day as my birthday. My name is John. So I just have this natural, you know, little connection or affinity to feel a connection with John the Baptist. Born on the same day, June 24th. John the Baptist prepares the way, chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah. And I have not read Isaiah yet, so it'll be interesting when we get back to that on these videos. I'm going to read the whole thing, you guys. Um, a voice of one calling in the desert, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Verse 4, John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a 
leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Yeah, hopefully, maybe be interesting to go. I mean, it would definitely be interesting to go there someday. I don't know what's going to be available with the current situations around the world, but we will see. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers who warned you, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. Pretty interesting. Out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. Verse 10, The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Chapter 3, verse 11, I baptize you with... Water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff, or chaff, I'm not sure, with unquenchable fire. So hopefully as we continue to read this and get more educated, I'll get better on all these pronunciations. Let's keep going. I like this with the John the Baptist. So verse 13, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you and, you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And we hear that again later when Isaiah and Moses, I think it's Isaiah and, and definitely Moses, that appear with Jesus after he is resurrected. And I think it's in the presence of Peter. Chapter 4, the temptation of Jesus. Okay, so Jesus spends some time being tempted by the devil. Very interesting, right away. I mean, baptism, being tempted by the devil. And then Jesus begins to preach. And then there's the calling of the first disciples. Jesus heals the sick. Um, I don't know how to say this, the Beatitudes. Now when he saw the crowds, he went. This is chapter 5. He went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs, is in the king for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled Blessed are the merciful, for they will be so shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Go through an interesting chapter of salt and light. I'm going to kind of jump through here. Um, the fulfillment of the law, murder, adultery, divorce, oaths, an eye for an eye, love for enemies, giving to the needy, prayer. Let's go over that small part. Um, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will re reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. Pagans is as mentioned a few times in here. For they think they will be heard because, they, because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Fasting, treasures in heaven, do not worry, judging others. Don't have a lot of time here because I'm not sure how long my, my memory is just so terrible here with this phone right now. The narrow and wide gates, a tree and its fruit, the wise and foolish builders, the man with leprosy, the faith of the centurion, Jesus heals many, the cost of following Jesus. Jesus calms the storm, the healing of two demon-possessed men. Jesus heals a paralytic, the calling of Matthew. And that's kind of what's, what's interesting here. Maybe I missed something, didn't pick it up. I mean, it, it, what relates from the calling of Matthew here, let's read it. Uh, it's chapter 9, verse 9. Interesting, 9-9, nine, nine, okay? Numbers, I, I think, are very much involved here, but... Uh, so we'll see. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Um, and so I look forward to coming back to this. We're going to continue on, but just that just reminds me. There's a lot of powerful pieces in here that I saw. Let's see if we can grab hold of them uh, as we continue. Jesus questioned about fasting. A dead girl and a sick woman. So he raises a, a dead girl from, a girl from the dead and calls that she was sleeping. And um, Jesus heals the blind and mute. The workers are few. Jesus sends out the twelve, and so he gives. I think in this area, I think it must be in this part where the uh, the twelve are are given um, the power by Jesus or the, and the Father through Jesus uh, to perform his miracles and heal. Um, and here's one part he says to him in chapter 10, verse 11. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave that home or town. I tell you the truth, it will be more bearable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. I am sending you like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Interesting. Very interesting. That energy, that bad energy that can follow you around. It said, shake the dust off your feet. Let's read some more from Jesus and John the Baptist. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. And John, when John heard heard in prison what Christ was doing he sent his disciple to his disciples to ask him are you the one who was come or should we expect someone else and i can't remember if i read through here if we figured out when john went to prison but he's in prison so when john heard let's see jesus replied go back and report to john what you hear and see the blind receive sight the lame walk those who have leprosy are cured the deaf hear the dead are raised and the good news is preached to the poor blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me as john's disciples were leaving jesus began to speak to the crowd about john what did you go out into the into the desert to see a reed swayed by the wind if not what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are kings in palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. 
I'm going to keep going until time cuts off. I may just go. I think I'm, I've done so much here. I'll patch it up if we lose time. I, I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, are there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. This is interesting because this is Matthew eleven eleven. The numbers are lining up here. Again, I tell you the truth. Among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold of it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. So there's another reference to this, I think, later on after this, where he's called that he was the Elijah who had shown up. It's interesting, I need, to go, I need to go back and read that, get some reference context on that. He who has ears, let him hear. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners, but wisdom is proved right by her actions. Woe on unrepentant cities. Rest for the weary. Lord of the Sabbath. <clears throat> God's chosen servant. Um, let's see. Jesus and Beelzebub, the sign of Jonah. So Jonah that spent three days the belly of a fish is mentioned here. I don't know if it's a whale in other books or in other parts. Um, and then we go into Jesus' mother and brothers and, and, then, and then parables. Interesting parables here. Now, when I thought when people reference Jesus spoke in parables and they're kind of referencing to everything he said... Um, but then even the parables here in this book, at least in Matthew, they are explained just like the next chapter over or within the same chapter. It must be the same one. So there's a parable and then it explains the parable pretty well, wide and open. So um, parable of the mustard seed and the yeast, parable of the weeds explained, parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl, parable of the net. Um, the parable of the weeds uh, was a good one. I mean, they just says that, you know, let the weeds grow with the wheat and in the day of harvest, the weeds will be thrown into the fire and the wheat will be collected and saved, right? Parable of the weeds explained, parable of the hidden treasure, da, 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 da. a prophet without honor, John the Baptist beheaded. Um, Jesus walks on the water. These are all in the book of Matthew. If you have, if you didn't know that, it's probably some of you, uh, plenty of you that do. Clean and unclean. John the Baptist beheaded. Let's see what we got with time here. At the time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the reports about Jesus, and he said to his attendants, This is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now Herod had, ar had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, for John had been saying to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people because they considered him a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced for him and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guest, he ordered that her request be granted and had, the, had John beheaded in the prison. His head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. John's disciples came and took his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus. Then we get into Jesus feeds the 5,000. Um, five pieces of bread and two fish. It's interesting they mention the bread more than the fish, though, about being broken apart. And again, for the 4,000, it's five pieces of bread or loaves. Um, Jesus walks on the water. 
Peter, uh, let's see, clean and unclean. I know there's so many different things in here that are great that I learned. I'm going to keep this video from going on too much longer. Um, Jesus feeds the 4,000. The demand for a sign. The yeast of the Pharisees and seduces. And, and so that means like, I guess, you know, yeast being planted among you. Jesus explains, I mean, uh, these, these uh, parables in here or the parables in this book are explained afterwards. Um, so I'm glad about reading this book at this time in my life to kind of understand the meaning behind things. Have that in, in my head as an idea as I'm reading the parables, and then and then you know, fortunately they're they're explained even further right afterwards. Peter's confession of Christ, Jesus predicts his death. The transfiguration, healing of a boy with a demon, the temple tax, the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, Matthew 18, and this is kind of what I was looking for. Some interesting parts on children here because children are just so valuable and beautiful in this world and I like that there's nice things said about them here and the key is behind children. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven, chapter uh, Matthew 18, verse 1. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them and he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 4. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world because of the things that cause people to sin. Such things must come. But woe to the man through whom they come. For if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. That's mentioned like at least twice, I think even three times just in this book here. Um, okay, parable of lost sheep. It quickly goes over. Uh, we'll go through one parable here. I think this time is being allowed here. Um, let's keep going. Verse 10, See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for if I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. Okay, a brother who sins against you, the parable of the unmerciful servant. Divorce the little children in Jesus. Let's go over that one. It's very short. Chapter 19, verse 13. Then little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Interesting. I like the, the speak of children. Um, parable. Let's see. The young rich man. The rich young man. And this is where you've heard that. Um, it's difficult for a rich man to get into heaven. What does it say? I tell you the truth, so chapter 19, verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who can be saved? Jesus took, looked at them and said, With man, it is, this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Peter answered him, we have left everything to follow you. 
What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, that the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits in his glorious throne, you who have, you who have followed me will also sit, in twelve, sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Okay, parable of the worker's vineyard. Jesus again predicts his death twice. Okay, let's read that short piece real quick, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. Jesus again predicts his death Chapter 20, verse 17. Now, as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Interesting, they say Gentiles, they mention pagans, so um, you know, I, I get a kind of an idea about the view on pagans here, um, and then an interesting mention of Gentiles, I think that was the only one, possibly a second time it's, it's brought up, so I'm interested in the outlook there. Um, Hosanna is mentioned in chapter 21, it means save, um, mother's request. Two blind men receive sight. The triumphal entry, the fig tree withers. The authority of Jesus question. The fig tree withers. Let's see. Da, da, da. Let's keep it going. We'll patch it together if we need to. The fig tree withers. Early in the morning, as he was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. If you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. So this is mentioned a few times um, within the mustard seed as well. Let's see, the authority of Jesus' question, the parable of the tenants, the parable of the wedding banquet. Good little lessons in here of wisdom anyways. Um, paying taxes to Caesar. That's where Jesus says, you know, they ask him, do you pay taxes to Caesar? He says, show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius and he asked them, whose portrait is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, so they left him and went away. Let's see, marriage at the resurrection, the greatest commandment. Um, still going on time, let's read this a little bit further. The greatest commandment, hearing that Jesus has, had silenced the Sadducees and the, the Pharisees, got together, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Very interesting piece there. Whose son is the Christ? So they're asking him a lot of these questions, testing him, and he's got these you know brilliant answers to give back. Seven woes, signs of the end of the age. Okay, so this is an interesting one. It almost kind of talks like as what I would you know, recognize as the book of Revelation out there. The day and hour unknown. Okay, another pretty big and heavy piece there. Parable of the ten virgins, another parable. Sheep and the goats, which is kind of like the wheat in the, in the weeds. And then there's the plot against Jesus. Jesus anointed by Bethany. Um, where Bethany is this woman that interestingly shows up where Jesus is staying and pours oil. Uh, uh, perfume on him it's preparing him for for death and he says you know like basically forever will she be remembered for what she's done judas agrees to pay, to betray jesus for 30 silver coins and we have the lord's supper and he even points out judas at the supper in front of everybody judas, judas ends up hanging himself for feeling bad about it jesus predicts peter's denial and surely peter denies Jesus three times before the rooster crows, um, you know, probably I just had a, you know, psychological response. I was thinking too, like, you know, when the, when the crowd's taking Jesus in, getting ready to kill him, this guy was afraid for his life. Peter, meaning rock. Um, 
before the Sanhedrin, Peter disowns Jesus, Judas hangs himself, Jesus before Pilate. Pilate even feel, seems to feel bad when he's describing, um, you know, Jesus is, you know, kind of like an innocent blood. And he, he asks the people even at one point, you know, who, which, which, um, which prisoner will he set free, Jesus or, uh, what's the name, Barabbas, Barabbas. And the people say, let Barabbas free. They wanted Jesus to be crucified. And they were even swayed by, I think, the priests before this happened. Um, soldiers mock Jesus. And then there's the crucifixion, the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the guard at the tomb, the resurrection, the guards report in the Great Commission. So let's read a little bit more. I wanted to read through the signs of the end of the age. We're getting this in. Let's go squeeze a little bit more here. Signs of the end of the age. Jesus left the temple and was walking away with his disciples. Came up when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. I tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. And as, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will the sign of your com coming and the end? What will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of birth pains. Then you will... Interesting, I mentioned birth, birth pains this week as well in the, my Wednesday video. Um, you'll see this before that comes out. Then you will be handed over to the persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by nations, by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come." So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on, on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for there will be a great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened at the time. At that time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it, for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect if they were if that were possible see i have told you ahead of time so if anyone tells you there he is out in the desert do not go out or here he is in the inner rooms do not believe it for as lightning lightning comes from the east and is visible even in the west so will be the coming of the son of man wherever there is a carcass there the vultures will gather Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky and uh, with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Interesting. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And we'll finish it off with the day and hour unknown. Um, you know, the rest of you know the, the death and resurrection is pretty well known. So this is probably one of the more interesting chapters right here, just as far as what's not usually covered out there. I can't believe the time lasted this long, but let's go for it. The day and the hour unknown. No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father, as it was in the days of Noah. So it will be at the ending at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. 
and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is, how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the hand mill, one will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on that day your Lord will come. But under, understand this, if the owner of the house had known at the time of night when the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because of the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the Master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good that for the servant whose master finds him doing for that the servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns, I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away. A long time and then he begins to be to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him at an hour he does not aware of he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth weeping and gnashing of teeth is mentioned many times in this book then there's a parable of the ten virgins which kind of um, explains, you know, very similar as far as be ready for when the master returns. And if you're not, um, you will be turned away. So it's like, you know, get ready, have good character. Um, and so that's long enough here because when we get into the plot against Jesus, death and the resurrection. And so we're looking forward to the next one. I might just jump right into Mark on the next video or I'll go back to Genesis. We will see. Thank you guys for watching. That is the book of Matthew in the New Testament in the Holy Bible. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you in the next one.